This Ag News update brought to you by American Implement, dedicated to the past, committed to the future. In a moment, Goodland, Kansas farmer and U.S. Wheat Association member Brian Lennon. Would you like to see something done about high gas prices and low unemployment? Western Place Energy in Campus, Kansas is doing something about it. They're a proud part of Growth Energy, America's ethanol supporters, and they employ 38 people and will be adding more following the expansion. Ethanol fuel not only reduces the cost of regular gasoline, it's good for the environment and keeps money right here in the United States while supporting local rural jobs. Western Plains Energy, doing something for the future. Wolfter Construction and Irrigation has been around a long time, and a lot of folks have trusted them to design, build, and service all sizes of commercial and on-farm storage for grain and equipment. Wolfter is also known for their outstanding irrigation division where they stock a complete selection of nozzles, regulators, drops, gear drives, electrical, and structure components. Looking for an electric motor? Wolfter has a large selection in single and three phase. Next time, reach out to the pros who have decades of experience at taking care of business the right way. Wolfter Construction and Irrigation. Joining us now is Brian Lennon, who is a farmer from Goodland, and he is not only on the Kansas Wheat Commission, but also a member of U.S. Wheat Associates. And so, uh, Brian, thanks for being here. It's my pleasure. All right, let's talk about the, the, the big news that we're still learning more about, and that is uh, uh, Brazil. And so, uh, uh, kind of give us uh, what you know and, and what the possibilities are of, of that market coming back. Yeah, so Brazil... Uh for a number of years now has not met their WTO commitment. When they entered the WTO back in 1994, they had a commitment to uh, have a duty-free tariff rate, rate quota of 750,000 metric tons of wheat from the U.S., among other things. They've never actually taken that, only a couple of years when Argentina was short on supply. And so just this morning, actually, they announced that uh, the Brazil's recommitted to taking 750,000 metric tons of U.S. wheat duty-free, and that's that's big news for the Kansas wheat farmers mm -hmm. and all wheat farmers in the U.S. Of course, six classes of wheat, but really a lot of this directly has an impact for, for hard red, correct? That's right. Most of that wheat would be hard red winter wheat that's produced in the, in the Mid Plains states, Kansas being, of course, one of the top producers of hard red winter wheat. So. All right, so, so we have this, this again, uh, it's not a huge amount, but again, it, it's kind of those building blocks with everything else we have going on. A market like Brazil coming back, uh, it has to make you feel good. Oh, very good. I mean, that's that's another 750,000 metric tons a year that we, we weren't moving. We haven't moved for years, 20 years. And, uh, you know, just like you say, those building blocks, I mean, if you consider China and the trade issues there, you know, up until two years ago, we were consistently exporting 1.6 million metric tons to China. In the last year and a half, we've done about 160,000, which is almost nothing. And so it's important to get those markets back. And you, if you start adding those up, that becomes enough wheat to, to pull our supply down and kind of cure the supply and demand issue with wheat that we have today. Other issues, uh, Australia and others having some weather concerns that uh, some of us in Kansas are starting to experience so as well. <laughs> well, it seems like we always have weather <laughs> issues in Kansas. But uh, yeah, Australia, they're having a tough time with their crop, and that could open up some markets for us this year. They're a big competitor for us in the mm -hmm. world. Yeah. They're one of the largest producers of hard white wheat in the world. We've tried to get hard white wheat going in Kansas, but hard red winter and hard white in the world you know, compete pretty closely together. That one can replace the other, and so... If Australia is looking at a shorter wheat crop, that gives us an end. So, sure. We're talking with Brian Lennon, who is a farmer from Goodland and is a member of the U.S. Wheat Association. Let's take a quick break. Back with more in just a moment. SNS Trailer Sales with two locations in Ness City, Kansas, is where everybody goes to buy or rent trailers. They feature the all-new, all-aluminum Mauer Grain Trailer with all of the electric options, the easy-to-load detached trailers, and a huge stock of header trailers. At the West location, you'll find bumper poles, goosenecks, and oil field specialty trailers, along with flat and utility beds for pickups. SNS Trailer Sales in Ness City and on the web, but remember, you do have to spell out the end. Day and night, till the job is done, Teeter is the one that works for you. 
fields of green reaching toward the sun teeter is the one that works for you teeter is the one teeter is the one that works for you teeter irrigation your source for water management. And joining us is Brian Lennon, who is a farmer from Goodland and also a member of the U.S. Wheat Associates. Uh, Brian, let's let's just let's just get down to the brass tacks of wheat, uh, especially in Kansas. We're known as the wheat state, but some would argue we've become the corn state. But there is still money to be made in wheat. Well, I think so. I think you know. In the current market conditions, it's a little tough because prices are low. But you know, with any commodity, there are always pricing opportunities. And on our farm, we really like wheat. It's a good lead into corn. It provides a good seed bed. The stubble does. And uh, you know, there's always pricing opportunities on wheat. It's a lower input cost crop, and it does well in Kansas. The numbers came in. Uh, of course, wheat numbers were down this year. Wheat numbers possibly. Um, when we get the final say of, of where exactly we are, where are you at in your farm? Actually, our wheat acres are up a little bit this year. We took on a little, little additional ground, and we're trying to get into our rotation. And like I said, you know, we really like wheat as a cash crop for our area, and it works in nice into our rotation. And so we're actually planting more wheat this year. But I do understand that across the state, wheat acres are down. All right, so let's talk a little about you. We haven't really talked much about U.S. Wheat Associates. Uh, U.S. Wheat, uh, you're really kind of all over the world. U.S. wheat is all over the world. Uh, U.S. wheat's kind of funded off the checkoff, and then they match those dollars with FMD and MAP funds from the federal government. And so we leverage that money, and we promote wheat in the world. We try to attract millers, buyers, and bakers all over the world. U.S. wheat operates 13 international offices around the world, and uh, the, the mission is that U.S. wheat is the best quality wheat in the world, and we're the most reliable supplier. And so we go to our customers and and try to show them how U.S. wheat can fit into their milling and baking operations. All right, so what else is on the horizon as a farmer leader uh, with U.S. wheat? Well, that's a that's a good question. I think I think the possibilities are endless. I'm actually right. going to run for the chairs this ah. year, so I'm running against a fellow from Oklahoma and We'll see how that turns out. Well, that'll, that'll be good. Well, again, Brian, thanks for your service for the agriculture industry. Thanks for the update, and uh, let's continue to talk positive about, uh, about something you and I know at least a little bit about is uh, that good old hard red <laughs> butter wheat. So thanks for your time. All right. Thank you. Brian Lennon, farmer from Goodland and a member of the U.S. Wheat Associates, has joined us. Stay with us. We'll have more coming up. All right. The cost of everything has gone up dramatically over the last 75 years. With one exception, keeping electricity affordable. Wheatland Electric, delivering energy for life, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. When you've had a best friend for over 50 years, you develop a trust. And the Scott Co-op has been a trusted rural friend since 1957. A co-op keeps money in the area, doing business for and with their members. And that helps keep their hometown thriving with keeping money in the community. Scott Co-op is not just an elevator. It's the rural way of doing business. So when you see an elevator, remember your friends at Scott Co-op. Well, that's an Ag News update. Listen for market updates and agriculture news important to you here on 1030 KBUF. Also be social with us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Ken Rogers. Thanks for watching.